Welcome. This video is about what happened on the sun over the last month, i.e. in April of 2019. It comprises of information from satellite data and also from various ground-based observatories. The sun has been relatively quiet this month. We've had three sunspot groups, all of which were in the Northern Hemisphere and all of which were old cycle, i.e. solar cycle 24. We had no significant X-ray flares of C1 class or greater. We had a few minor coronal mass ejections, but most of those were on the far side of the sun, so probably didn't affect the Earth very much. And so as a consequence, we've had no major geomagnetic storms. This is a plot of the daily sunspot number from the Solar Influences Data Center in Belgium. It comprises of three active regions. The first one was active region 2737 at early part of the month. Then we had the return of a large spot uh, in the form of active region 2738 and then towards the end we had a second region appear just to the east of 2738 now designated 2739. Both 2738 and 2739 rotated over the west limb before they died away so there's a possibility that either or both of them could return. With all the activity we've had in the last couple of months, it would be legitimate to ask, are we at solar minimum yet? And I think the answer to that is definitively not. Here in red, I show the sunspot number for April of 2019. And I'm contrasting that in blue with the equivalent sunspot number from uh, 10 years ago, which was just after solar minimum. In April of 2019, the average sunspot number for the month was about 10 almost identical to what it was in March. In April of 2009, the average sunspot number was just over one. So there's a factor of 10 difference between the sunspot level uh, now than it was just after solar minimum in 2009. There's also another difference here. We have three sunspot regions during the month of April in 2019. All of them lasted at least five days, and some were the return of a sunspot from the previous rotation. So we have something that's lasted nearly 60 days. You'll see the ones in 2009 were very short lived regions. Also, the regions in 2019 are all solar cycle 24 regions, i.e. old cycle regions. The ones in 2009 were also solar cycle 24, but that would have been new cycle regions then. So there's a fundamental difference between the type and level of activity now than there was at solar minimum last time around. So I would therefore say it's fairly clear that we are not yet at solar minimum. That level of activity that we're currently seeing has to die down quite a lot before we get to solar minimum. First, let's take a look at active region 2737. It was a relatively short-lived group. And this picture was taken near sun center when it was at its about maximum number of sunspots. You can see all the sunspots are relatively small and so it wasn't surprising that the region died away relatively quickly. So now let's take a look at some movies of 2737. We'll start with the Solar Dynamics Observatory HMI white light channel which will show the sunspots. Then the equivalent magnetogram and it's interesting to see how the magnetogram shows the presence of something going on there before the sunspots appear and long after the sunspots have disappeared. And then finally, we'll take a look at the SDO AIA 171 channel, which is about a million degrees. This is the sunspot channel and you can see the new sunspot region are just appearing there on the left hand side of the picture. And now it's moving across the sun. The number of sunspots is changing quite rapidly and by the fifth, it, they basically have disappeared. Now this is the magnetogram movie and you can see the region uh, appearing here with black leading and white following. That's typical of solar cycle 24. And so this is an old cycle region developing. Now interestingly by the time it gets to the, the western side of this image uh, the sunspots have disappeared but the magnetic field has not. Now this is the coronal movie. Here comes the region but one of the things to notice is that even though this is a relatively modest set of spots, the corona seems exceedingly active and there's a lot of dynamics going on there. This is quite typical. Even after the sunspots have disappeared. Next, let's take a look at active region 2738. This returned 
as one huge spot. It first appeared on the 19th of March in the previous rotation, with a few satellite spots that came and went as the th region crossed the disk. One interesting feature here is that there's a light bridge forming in the actual main part of the spot itself. This is called the umbra, and that's usually a sign that the uh, sunspot is starting to break up. Next, let's take a look at Active Region 2738 movies. The same three as I showed before. First, the Sunspot movie. Second, the Magnetic movie. And third, the Million Degree Coronal movie. You'll see the Sunspot come over the eastern limb. There it is. It'll travel across the disc with lots of little spots appearing and disappearing and eventually go over the western limb, like now. Here is the equivalent Magnetic movie and you can see there's a lot of development as this region crosses the disk. This is the Corona movie and you can see that you can see the region long before it gets onto the disk. Uh, that's because of the height of the, uh, the loops. When it goes over the western limb you'll see the same thing. For a couple of days afterwards you can still see the region is active. Last but not least we'll take a look at active region 2739. This comprised of many small spots. It appeared just a few degrees behind the active region 2738 and rotated over the disk without decaying away. So there's a chance that it developed further on the backside of the sun and may return in a few days time uh, to show us some either a larger group or a similar size group and possibly some more flaring activity. And once again we'll show the movies of active region 2739. The Sunspot movie, the Magnetic movie and the Coronal movie in that order. You can now see the sunspots start to emerge and as it goes across the limb, first of all they start to uh, move further apart, but they also seem to decay away and that's only an optical illusion because of the foreshortening of the sun. Those spots are probably still there when they go over the limb and we can tell that from the uh, coronal movie. One thing that fools many people is when a sunspot approaches the west limb or appears around the east limb, they seem to develop an opposite polarity on the edge towards the limb. This is an optical illusion caused by the fact that these are line of sight magnetograms and not full three dimensional magnetograms. Now here's the coronal movie and you can see the new region developing in the middle of the frame at the moment. But as it goes towards the limb, it actually seems to get more active rather than less active. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the Coronal Mass Ejection movies. And this was a big surprise for me and uh, probably the most interesting of all the movies. Because there wasn't very much activity on the front surface of the sun does not mean that there wasn't a lot of activity on the back surface of the sun. I'm going to show the movie three times and try and count the number of Coronal Mass Ejections. First off the east limb, that's the left hand limb, and then off the west limb, the right hand limb. And just see how many there were. There were quite a lot in my opinion and so consequently that would say there was a lot of activity, flaring activity, on the back side of the sun. I've implied that a couple of solar active regions may well be returning. So let's take a look at what the chances of that happening is. So are they about to return? This is 2738 and 2739, the two regions that rotated over the west limb a couple of weeks ago. Well, the, if you look at the stereo data, which looks at partly at the backside of the sun, you can see that uh, these regions are still fairly active. They're very bright and uh, there have been some uh, flare-like activity from them, plus we've also seen the coronal mass ejections. So that's promising for the possible return of these regions and the possibility they might produce some flares when on the front surface of the sun. We're also beginning to see the first signs of them on the east limb of the sun. This would be the return of active region 2738. That was the large spot that we talked about a, a few slides back. So this doesn't look as impressive as the region did when it re came over the limb last time, but that's still a couple of days away, so there's a chance for it to get much more impressive yet. So I think the chances are that these regions will return. The question is, 
Are there any sunspots in them and how active are they, are they going to be? So in summary then, we had significant sunspot activity, although not a great deal of flaring. We had sunspots lasting for more than one rotation in one case. The regions were all old cycle regions, i.e. solar cycle 24 spots. The northern hemisphere is still dominant. So I conclude from all of that that we're not at solar minimum as yet. We had no significant flares above the C1 level. And we had several CMEs, which implies that we may have had some flares on the far side of the sun, uh, which were invisible from here from Earth. So now I'm going to update my solar cycle 25 predictions based on the new data that we've just got. I think solar minimum is at least one year away, perhaps longer. Solar cycle 25 will not show a significant activity until after solar cycle 24, northern hemisphere activity has died away. Now this is based on the experience from the last solar cycle where the southern hemisphere persisted for many uh, months beyond the northern hemisphere and so then solar cycle 24 didn't stop until that southern hemisphere had cooled down. The solar cycle 25 will start initially and mostly be in the southern hemisphere. Now this is a departure from the last four solar cycles, so this is a bit of a risky prediction. And lastly, solar cycle 25 will be about 25% larger than solar cycle 24. I base that on the fact that when we've had a low cycle equivalent to the one that we've currently just been through, the next cycle was on average about 25% larger. So until next time, goodbye.